Are we alive or are we live? So this is David Serena. We're continuing this series on the Gnostic Gospels. And today we did the trimorphic protonoia last week, which shows um, Christ or God appearing in three forms, the Father, the Mother, and the Son, which is, which is trimorphic. But now we're going into what's called, this particular scripture has two names. It's actually the Holy Book of the Great Invisible Spirit. And invisible, I love the word invisible because it means it's, it's something that you feel in your heart and it's infinite. But its common name is the Gospel of the Egyptians. And you have to understand the Apostle Mark brought Christianity into Egypt. I mean, I mean, of course, that's the story we're told. But again, understanding that the that the Romans were in trouble <clears throat> and their empire was in trouble, and this new religion uh, was sweeping their empire, and they did everything they could to eradicate every copy, in fact, every group <coughs> of Christians they tried to eradicate. So it was very difficult for anything of the religion to survive unless the Romans would overtake it, to usurp it and gain control of it. And once they did, then you, you started to see the formation of the first larger churches. I'll say larger churches because the, the first Christians are really the apostles of of uh, Jesus, Isa. And what's what's amazing is how Gnostic Christianity kind of gets um, it kind of gets labeled as a side group of Christianity, and that's just marketing because the the, con the continuation of the Roman Church and the modern Christian movement doesn't want to believe that they could possibly be missing something. And but when you really understand what these these pieces of work are, they are the first Christians. This is the the earliest Christianity. Now, that doesn't mean that because there's a date on when they estimate that these particular manuscripts were written means anything, because the way teachings were were. Um, proliferated in those days is through master oral teaching and the reason it was master oral rather than written is the Roman <clears throat> persecutors would burn every written copy they could get their hands on and so it went in to the students through the oral tradition and it had to be perfected so when you look at a piece of work like we're about to read today and this one is not very long um, you, you wonder how did this copy appear a little later than the canonized Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the you know Book of Acts, etc. How did this get orally preserved for about two to three or four even family generations from the time of the living Christ? So how did it survive, and, and why is it it's so perfect? Because it, it's not vague at all, as you see. But one of the things you're going to see consistently in the, and I'll call them the, the first or the earliest Christians, which are the apostles themselves, and the movement and the testimony <clears throat> and the oral testimony of what was taught it's very clear that we see this trimorphic form everywhere. It's not like it's not like it only appeared in one or two gospels. It actually appears consistently, which means the the, the surviving movement of Christianity at that time was a threat to an all male hierarchy, meaning the Roman Empire. So you can see that anything that went against the idea of all male control and rulership would be thrown out. And it would be thrown out by the, um, the founding fathers who, who proclaimed God was in them and they were ruling and they were going to decide in these great councils, the first and second council at Nicaea, 
another great council at Hippo in North Africa and Trento, Italy. And th there were actually a lot of councils. There wasn't just the Nicene councils. And they were all male councils. There were no women sitting on the board. So when, when you understand that, you, you're, you realize that Christ was, was most likely married, like any prophet would have been, and had children. And that, that the, the, the balance between male and female in the image of God would have been very prevalent. And, and that doesn't, I, I don't know why even today um, with a lot of progressive thinking, why that's so challenging to accept when we can see the corruption in an all male church, we, we can see what happens from the sexual abuse and, and to the, the, the abuse of the money powers in modern churches. So I believe if we had preserved the original form of Christianity, the way it was taught, we would see far less of that corruption in the church today. So I'm going to start reading. David, the Holy do you Spirit. have a link? Do you have a link for today's reading? Yeah, I mean, I can put it in the in the chat here for people. And again, you know, when you read these things the first time, it, it's um, it is a little challenging. You do feel a little bit lost, but once you read all of them, you'll see how they all support each other. It's not like one piece of text is going against another piece of text, but it, there's no doubt that modern Christianity is, is lacking. So I'm going to start reading. The holy book of the Egyptians about the great invisible spirit, the father whose name cannot be uttered, he who came forth from the heights of perfection, the light of the light of the aeons of light, the light of the silence and the providence, and the father of the silence, the light of the word and the truth, the light of the incorruptions, the infinite light, the radiance from the aeons of light and of the unrevealable, unmarked, ageless, unproclaimed Father, the Ans of Ans, autogenes, self-begotten, self-producing, alien, the really true aeon. <laughs> That's the first paragraph. It's amazing to see the word alien in there. Um, again, these are translated, you know, from um, Greek and, and Aramaic and, and many, many source languages. They're, they're not all, um, they're not all Greek manuscripts. So it says, three powers came forth from him. They are the father, the mother, and the son of the living silence. What came forth from the incorruptible father? These came forth from the silence of the unknown father. And again, they give the infinite a name, uh, which they're calling father in the translation. But it, it's really describing itself as, as um, you know, non-gender. It really describes itself in a non-gender way. And from that place, Domedon, Doxomedon came forth. The aeons and the aeons of the light of each of, of one of their powers. And thus the sun came forth, forth, meaning fourth, the number four. The mother, fifth, and the father, sixth. So the son, the mother, and the father. Notice that the, the son, which is, again, auto-generated, comes forth forth. He was but unheralded. It is he who is unmarked among the powers, the glories, and the incorruptions. From that place, three powers came forth, the three ogdos that the Father brings forth in the silence with his providence from his bosom, i.e., Father, the Mother, and the Son. So this is this piece of work starts very clearly that we have perfect balance. The first ogdode, because of which the thrice male child came forth, which is the thought and the word and the incorruption and the eternal life, the will, the mind, and the foreknowledge of the androgynous father. So androgynous father means it's not male. It's just getting the title because I guess, you know, we, we don't know what to call it. The second Ogdo power, the mother, the virginal Barbellon, which is Barbello, Epitoch, and um, again, there's some missing text here, who presides over the heaven, 
the uninterpretable power of the ineffable mother. She originated from herself. She came forth. She agreed with the father of the silent silence, which is really the infinite consciousness. So she's just, she's self-generated. She's not created. She's self-generated. The third Ogdo power, the son of the silent silence and the crown of the silent silence and the glory of the father and the virtue of the mother, he brings forth from the bosom of the seven powers of the great light of the seven voices. And the word is their completion. So you're going to, you're going to understand what the seven voices are in a minute here because we're just about there. We're, we're almost coming to the vowel toning practice, which is an actual practice. These are the three powers, the three ogdos that the father through his providence brought forth from his bosom. He brought them forth at that place. Domadon Doxomedon came forth, the aeon of the aeons and the throne which is in him and the powers which surround him, the glories and the incorruptions, the father of the great light who came forth from the silence. He is the great Doxomedon aeon in which the thrice male child rests. And the throne of his glory was established in it. This one on which his unrevealable name is inscribed on the tablet. There's missing words there. One is the word, the father of the light of everything. He who came forth from the silence while he rests in the silence. He whose name is an invisible symbol. A hidden mystery came forth. And these are your seven vowels. And they're all labeled here, seven vowels, 22 times each, which means you, you intone the seven vowels 22 times each. And of course, 22 divided by seven is pi, 3.14, which is the resolution of a circle. And a circle is, is very, it's not just symbolic, right? If I, if I take a circular piece of pipe and, and the wind blows over the surface of the circle, it emits a sound a vowel sound actually so we see that also seven times 22 is 154 and why is that amazing because when <clears throat> when jesus resurrected in the canonized gospels the apostles who couldn't catch any fish all night caught 153 fish and the number 153 corresponds to the name of magdalene actually in in the ancient he see in the ancient hebrew language and again aramaic which is what jesus spoke is early hebrew um <clears throat> they actually had a number assigned to every letter so it wasn't like this new age phenomenon called um, numerology it, it was actually true every letter was assigned a number so mary magdalene's name is 153. So this would mean that the father of the light of everything, the, the, the numerical value is 154 because it says right here, a hidden invisible mystery comes forth. He whose name is an invisible symbol. So he whose name is an invisible symbol, the name of the infinite God is the seven vowels 22 times. And again, that is pi. Now what's amazing, if you go to Genesis, in your Bible, and you go to Genesis 3.14, notice that 3.14 is pi, 3.14. And we're introduced to the, the name of God, meaning the four letters, the Tetragrammaton, the YWHW. So that is to say there is a connection to the name of God in pi and a circle. So... There, th this is really, really deep stuff here. And so these vowels have a, uh, have a practice, seven vowels 22 times each, means that as an exercise, it would take you quite a bit of time to intone these vowels. And they start with I, E, O, U, and the second E is E, and then A, and Oh, meaning so there's 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 two O's and there's two E's actually, but the two the second O is kind of like an A sound. It's an aw ah, as opposed to a just saying a. So when when you understand what these are, and you understand that that toning requires a perfect pitch, 
right? Like when, when you teach somebody how to sing, you don't just sing at any old pitch and you don't chant at any old pitch. You don't just say, ah, oh, like at any old pitch. You get trained at proper pitch. And the fact that this is symbolic of pi, pi gives us a clue to the, the mystery of wavelength or circle as wavelength, as in literally a sound or an electromagnetic wave has a wavelength, right? You know, a, a wave propagates really along in an ever-ending circular spiral like this, literally. So we, we see that the invisible name of God, the infinite father, which is not male, which is just the, the word father, because there's another father, which is the male, and the female that manifests underneath the infinite father. So this is to say that the invisible symbol that represents the name of the creation are these perfect vowel sounds that are done in a perfect harmony. So this is the basis of a lost teaching here and a lost practice. And, and this is not, this, this you're, you're speaking of the first Christians and you're speaking most likely if when you really understand that the, the, there's there's scripture and then there's the history of the religion around the scripture. So we know that, that Jesus, his father and mother, took him to Egypt to hide him from the persecution of the innocents. And he was raised in Egypt. So you, you have to really see that he probably spent more years as a child growing up in Egypt than he did preaching the Gospels before he was crucified. So this is greater than, than anyone can possibly imagine. So now that we, we learn how to tone, and I have a whole course on, on the toning practice, which once you start doing, and then you all of a sudden, you come to the point where you're ready to intone holy words, which is an assembly of vowels, syllables and consonants and you're going to you're going to start to see some very beautiful holy words appearing in the next part of the scripture so continuing and in this way the three powers gave praise to the great invisible unnameable virginal uncallable spirit and his male virgin they asked for a power the silence of living silence came forth namely glories and incorruptions in the aeons Myriads added on, the three males, the three male offspring, the male races, and uh, there's a lot of damaged text here, so we're, we're missing a lot. The glories of the Father, the glories of the great Christ, and the male offspring, the races, filled the great doxamadon aeon with the power of the word of the whole pleroma. Then the thrice male child called of the great Christ, whom the great invisible spirit had anointed, he whose power was called Anon, A-I-N-O-N, gave praise to the great invisible spirit and his male virgin, Yoel. Now, remember, the in the early Aramaic and Hebrew language, there's no J sound. So, so Yoel could literally be where Noel and also jo, Joel, J-O-E-L, came from. And, and believe it or not, Jerusalem was not pronounced with a J either. The city of Jerusalem was Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So there is no J. That's, that's Latin. So when the, when the Romans, of course, occupied Jerusalem, they added the J. But in the Hebrew language, there's, there's no J. It's Jerusalem. And the silence of the silent silence and the greatness ineffable ineffable so many so many missing words here in the text i get there's notations of missing text unanswerable and uninterpretable the first one who has come forth and who is unproclaimable which is wonderful ineffable he who has all the greatness of the greatness of the silence at that place the thrice male child brought praise and asked for a power from the great invisible virginal spirit there appeared at that place, um, there's a lot of damaged text there, who sees glories, treasures, in uh, invisible mysteries too, of the silence, who is the male virgin, Yoel. So Yoel, which would later be Joel, is, is 
um, is literally one of the three male children. Then the child of, of the child, Esephek, appeared, and thus he was completed, namely the father, the mother, the son, the five seals, the unconquerable power, which is the great Christ of all the incorruptible ones. Um, it says right here, one line is unrecoverable. Um, holy, the end, the incorruptible, and they are powers and glories and incorruptions. They came forth. Um, there's a lot of damage here. I'm going to kind of skip through through the damage sections because it's it's difficult to even read this. Um, thrones, uh, myriads of powers without number surrounded them, glories and incorruptions, um, and they of the Father and the Mother and the Son and the whole Paroma, which I mentioned before, in the five seals and the mystery of mysteries, they appeared. Three lines missing. Um, now we come back into the text where it starts to reappear. Then providence came forth from silence, and the living silence of the Spirit, and the word of the Father and the light. Period. She, the five seals which the Father brought forth from his bosom, and she passed through all the ends which I mentioned before, and she established thrones of glory and myriads of angels without number, who surrounded them, powers and, and incorruptible glories, who sing and give glory and giving praise, with a single voice, with one accord, with one never silent voice to the father and the mother and the son. So you always see the father and the mother of the son. And, and, and you're going to see this when you come to a, a manuscript called the Gospel of the Hebrews, which is not the book of Hebrews in the Bible, but it's the Gospel of the Hebrews. Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as his true mother. And all the promises that I mentioned above, who is the great Christ? who is from the silence, who is incorruptible child, tell Mael, tell Machael, Ma, tell Machael looks like, like Michael. It's really spelt like the, the tell is like a prefix. Eli, Eli, Makar, Makar, Seth, the power which truly lives, and the virgin, the male virgin who is within them, Yoel, Esephic, the holder of the glory, the child of the child, and the crown of his glory of the five seals, the paroma that I mentioned before. There, the great self-begotten living word came forth, the true God, the unborn Physis, he whose name I shall tell, saying, um, and then all this is damaged text, who is the son of the great Christ, who is the son of the ineffable silence, who came forth from the great invisible incorruptible spirit, the son of the silence, and silence appeared. Now remember, Christ means in Greek, anointed one. And again, that word did not exist when, when um, Isa, Jesus, walked upon the earth. So we come to, he brought praise to the great invisible virginal, virginal spirit, the silence of the Father in a silence of the living Silence of silence, the place where the man rests. Two lines unrecovered. Um, we're going to start to come into a whole section that has no damage. And, and that's oh. going to get a lot more. But again, you can see the consistency here of yeah. the image of God being truly without gender, you know, transcendent of all gender. And then you see gender appearing, male, female, and child. Then there came forth at from that place the cloud of the great light. Does that, does that mean there's another aspect to God, or how does it differentiate? The well, it shows it shows the manifestation of God being the mother and the father and the child, the son, the son. Wow, the that's a beautiful that's a beautiful word, manifestation of God. Yeah, cool. the mother of the holy incorruptible ones, the great power Mirothe, and she gave birth to him whose name whose name I name, saying three times, Ayin, Ayin, A, A, A. So again, this is where we see the birth of these very holy words. So you have the toning, you have the seven vowels 22 times, which is the, which is the 154, and the 154 is actually the numerical value of the ineffable God, the invisible symbol. And the 153 is the resurrection number. 
And so we, we see the, the meaning of circle. And, and those are going to be very important symbols when we come to the, the arrest of Jesus, when he's arrested. He has all his disciples dancing in a, in a holy circle. So we see Ayin, Ayin, A, A, A. And A, A, A really is a mysterious um, thing to see here because A is a chief god in the ancient Sumerian world, by the way. So continuing, for this one, Adamas, which is Adam, is a light which radiated from the light. He is the eye of the light, for this is the first man. He through whom, to whom everything came into being, and without whom nothing came into being. The unknowable, incomprehensible <clears throat> Father came forth. He came down from above for the annulment of the deficiency. The deficiency is the imperfect humans that were created, which is who we are. So it puts Adam at quite a station then that way. Yeah, and of course, Adam isn't the first human being that ever walked on the earth. This, this is the Genesis yeah. period. Then the great logos, the divine autogenes, the incorruptible man, Adamus, mingled with each other. A logos of man came into being. However, the man came into being through a word. Through a word, which has a vibration, right? Because these are these yeah. words are constructed with perfect vowels. I wonder what the Greek word for guru is. For what? You said guru a word, so I wonder what the Greek words are in there, the exact, because you're reading a translation. So I'm yeah, this would, if you see a word like logos, then, then the original was probably in Greek. Right. He gave praise to the great, invisible, incomprehensible, virginal spirit, and the male virgin, and the thrice male child, and the male virgin, Yoel, which would be later in Latin, Joel. And Esaphek, the holder of the glory, the child of the child, and the crown of his glory, and the great Doxomedon Aeon, and the thrones which are in him, and the powers which surround him, the glories and the incorruptions, and their whole Pleroma, which I mentioned before, and the ethereal earth, and the ethereal earth, the receiver of God, where the holy men of the great light receive shape, the men of the father of the silent living silence, the father and their whole Pleroma, as I mentioned before. Now, notice the thrice male child, because you have to understand, he's talking about three male virgins. And it can, you can't think of the word virgin in, in the classical sense, because that's not what it actually means. It's a status of purity and illumination. And, of course, John the Baptist is born in concert with, the, with, with Jesus, Isus. And, and they came to earth on a mission. So that would mean there would be one more child who was part of this major movement who is male. And, and we have to find out who that is. The great logos, the divine autogenes, and the incorruptible man Adamus gave praise. And they asked for a power and eternal strength for the autogenes, for the completion of the four aeons, in order that through them, there may appear the glory and the power of the invisible Father of the holy men of the great light, light, which will come to be the world, which is the image of the night. The incorruptible man, Adamus, asked for them a son out of himself in order that he, the son, may become father of the immovable, incorruptible race, so that through it, the race, the silence of the voice may appear, and through it, the dead aeon may raise itself so that it may dissolve. And thus there came forth from above the power of the great light, the manifestation. She gave birth to four great lights, Harmozo, Oriael, Devathe, Alelith, and the great incorruptible Seth, the son of the incorruptible man, Adamus. But now this is one major Right, because Seth is the son of Adam. Right. So, and, but then Alelith is actually Lilith? very Alelith. Alelith. So that's not Lilith. What's that? That's not Lilith, right? Yeah, I think it is Lilith, and that's that. And that's why it, it's a great mystery. Wow, <clears throat> that's the perfect. 
have domad, which exist in hidden mysteries, became complete. When she receives the glory, she becomes eleven ogdos. And the father nodded approval. The whole pleroma of the lights was well pleased. Their consorts came forth for the completion of the ogdote of the divine autogenes. The grace of the first light, Harmozel, the perception of the second light, Oriel, and the understanding of the third light, Devathe, and the prudence of the fourth light, Eleleth. This is the first ogdone of the divine autogenes. autogenes. And the father nodded approval. The whole pleroma of the lights was well pleased. The ministers came forth. The first one, the great Gami, Gamaleel, the first great light Harmozel, the great Gabriel of the second great Oriel, and the great wow. Samuel, the great light Davithe, and the great Abraxas of the great light Aleleth. So there you see Gabriel and the consorts of those who came forth by the will of the good pleasure of the Father, the memory of the Great One, the first Gamaliel, the love of the Great One, the second Gabriel, <clears throat> the peace of the third one, the great Sam blow, the eternal life of the Great One, the fourth Abraxas, Abrasex, and there were five Ogdos completed the total of 40 as in uninterpretable power. So you're seeing the structure, really, of, of, of the support system for the, the messianic incarnation to come forth. The great logos, the autogenes, and the word of the Purim of the four lights gave praise to the great invisible, uncallable virgin spirit, the male virgin, and the great do doxomedon aeon and the thrones which are in them and the powers which surround them glories authorities and the powers and the thrice male child and the male virgin yoel and esophic the holder of the glory and the child of the child and the crown of his glory the whole pleroma and the glories which are there the infinite pleromas and unnameable aeons in order that they may name the father of the fourth incorruptible race and that they may be called the seed of the father the seed of the great seth so that means there's an incorruptible race that comes forth and has a bloodline on the earth i mean that that's clearly what's starting to happen here then everything shook and the trembling took hold of the incorruptible ones then the three three male children came forth from above see there's three male children here down they came down into the unborn ones and the self-begotten ones and those who were begotten and what is begotten the greatness came forth the whole greatness of the great christ he established thrones and glory marriage without number and four aeons around them marriage without number powers and glories and incorruptions and they came forth in this way and the incorruptible spiritual church increased in the four lights of the great living autogenes the god of truth praising singing and giving glory with one voice, with one accord, and with a mouth which does not rest to the Father, to the Mother, and the Son, and their whole pleroma, just as I mentioned before, the five seals which possess the myriads, <clears throat> and they who rule over the ants, and they who bear the glory of the leaders, were given command to reveal to those who are worthy. Amen. <clears throat> now, let me just see how... And the great Seth. Wow. We'll see in the incredible church. There's the incredible. Then the great Seth, the son of the incredible man, Adamus, gave praise to the great invisible, uncallable, and nameable virginal spirit, and the male virgin, and the thrice male child, and the male virgin, Yoel Ephesek, the holder. Yeah, this is what I just read. Okay, over after 5,000 years, the great light Allah spoke, let someone reign over the chaos of Hades. And there appeared a cloud whose name is Hylic Sophia. She looked out on the parts of the chaos, her face being like in her form. And the great angel Gamaliel spoke to the great Gabriel, the minister of the great light, Oriel, and said, let an angel come forth in order that he may reign over the chaos of Hades. Then the cloud 
being agreeable, came forth in two monads, each one of which had light. <clears throat> the throne which she had placed in the cloud above, then Sakla, the great angel, saw a great demon who was with him, Nebruel, and they became together a begetting spirit of the earth. They begot assisting angels. Sakla said to the great demon, Nebruel, let the twelve aeons come into being in the aeons. World's <clears throat> damage text here, the great angel Sakla said by the will of the autogenes, there shall be the <clears throat> of the number of seven, there's missing text here, and he said to the great angels, go and get each of you reign over his world. Each one of the twelve angels went forth. The first angel is Athoth. He is the one whom the great generations of men call, <clears throat> um, and the name is missing. Oh, <laughs> that's too bad. The second is Armas, who is the eye of the fire. The third is Galala. The fourth is Yobel, not Yoel. The fifth is Adonai, Adonaios, who is called Sabbath. The sixth is Cain, who is the generations of men called the right. sons. The seventh is Abel. The eighth is right. Ak Akrasina. The ninth is Yubel. The tenth is Harmupiel. The eleventh is Archer. Adonin, the twelfth is Belios. These are the ones who preside over Hades and Chaos. And after the founding of the world, Sakla said to his angels, I'm a jealous God, and apart from me, nothing has come into being since he has trusted in his nature. Now, you have to understand, Yalta Baoth, one of his names is Sakla. Okay. Why is that important? Yalta Baoth is the egotistical God. So, right. <clears throat> Remember, he's the lowercase god, who is, who is akin to Zeus or Jupiter. <clears throat> right. So after the founding of the world, Sakla said to his angels, I am a jealous god, and apart from me, nothing has come into being since he trusted in its nature. Then a voice came from on high, saying, The man exists and the son of the man, because of the descent of the image above, which is like its voice in the height of the image, which has looked out through the looking of the image above, the first creature was formed. Because of this, Metanoia came into being. She received her completion and her power by the will of the Father and his approval, with which he approved of the great incorruptible immovable race of the great mighty men of the great Seth, in order that he may sow it in the ands which had been brought forth, so that through her Metanoia, remember, Pronoia is the is the is the great luminosity. So meta means Meta really means beyond, so it's it's a it's a it's a meta um, noia, which noia is a luminous thought. The deficiency may be filled up, for she had come forth from above down to the world, which is the image of the night. <clears throat> when she had come, she prayed for the repentance of both the seed of the archon and this aeon, and the authorities who had come from him, and that defiled. Um, of the demon begetting God, which will be destroyed in the seed of Adam and the great Seth, which is like the sun. Then the great angel Hormos came to prepare through the virgins of the corrupted showing of his aeon in a logos begotten holy vessel through the Holy Spirit, the seed of the great Seth. And this is very interesting here because <clears throat> um, you're seeing the same structure that we've seen in the preceding manuscripts, which is the Supreme God presides above as infinite consciousness, and then you're seeing the egotistical, jealous, angry God, who is who is really the deceiver. And last week I showed you in the canonized Gospels in John chapter 8, where Jesus is telling Jews at the temple that they're inexperienced and they happen to be worshiping this liar, this murderer and liar and jealous and angry God. And he right. actually calls that God a murderer and a liar. And we know that the prophet Elijah uh, revealed the same thing, that a group of Jews right. were worshiping the wrong God and he sets them straight and he shows them where the real God is. And so <clears throat> then the great Seth came and brought his seed and it was sown in the ends which had been brought forth. Their number being the amount of Sodom. Some say that Sodom is the place of pasture of the great Seth, which is Gomorrah. 
But others say that the great Seth took his plant out of Gomorrah and planted it in the second place to which he gave the name Sodom. This is the race which came forth through Edokla. For she gave birth through the word to truth and justice, to the origin of the seed of eternal life, which is with those who will persevere because of the knowledge of their emanation. This is the great incorruptible race which has come forth through three worlds to the world. And the flood came as an example for the consummation of the aeon, but it will be sent into the world because of this race. A conflagration will come upon the earth, and grace will be those who belong to the race through the prophets and the guardians who guard the life of the race. Because of this race, famines will occur, plagues, but these things will happen because of the great incorruptible race. Because of this race, temptations will come a falsehood of false prophets. <clears throat> and again, that's where Jesus is warning in, in, in the book of John how easy it is to get deceived and even follow false prophets. Then the great Seth saw the activity of the devil and his many guises and his schemes, which will come upon his Seth's incorruptible, immovable race and the persecutions of his powers and his angels in their error, and they acted against themselves. I mean, this is like Star Wars on the face of the earth. If you really see what's going on here, and we're getting near the end here, everybody. Um, <clears throat> of this piece of work. Then the great set we praise to the great uncallable virginal spirit and the male virgin Barbellon and the thrice male child Telmael, Telmael, Heli, Heli, Makar, Makar, Seth, the power which truly lives and the male virgin Yoel and the Esephek, the holder of the glory and the crown of his glory and the great Do Doxomedon Aeon is that, that similar to what Jesus said on the cross? Eli, Eli, Lamas. Well, that's he's again. Eli, Eli is is. You're going to see the answer to that. It's starting. Okay. You're going to understand how these words, the true words, appear, because it almost sounds like he's calling to Elijah. Because there's no J in Elijah. It's right. Eli. It's Eli. Then there came forth from the great aeons 400 ethereal angels accompanied by the great Aerosiel and the great Selmechel to guard the great incorruptible race, its fruit, the great men of the great Seth from the time of the moment of truth and justice until the consummation of the aeon and its archons, those whom the great judges have condemned to death. Then the great Seth was sent by the four lights by the will of the autogenes and the hope aroma through the gift and the good pleasure of the great invisible spirit and the five seals and the whole pleroma. So we're coming to the end of this piece of work here. He passed mm -hmm. through the three paruses, which I mentioned before, the flood, the conflagration, yeah. and the judgment of the archons and the powers and the authorities to save her, the race, who went astray through the reconciliation of the world and the baptism through a Logos begotten body, which the great Seth prepared for himself secretly through the Virgin, in order that the saints may be begotten by the Holy Spirit through invisible secret symbols, through a reconciliation of the world within the world, through the reconciliation of the world, and the God of the 13 Aeons, and through the con vocations the convocations of the saints than the ineffable ones and through the incorruptible bosom and through the great light of the father who pre-existed with his providence and established through her the holy baptism that surpasses the heaven through the incorruptible logos begotten one even jesus the living one even whom the great seth has put on and through him, he nailed the powers of the 13 ands and, they, and established those who are brought forth and taken away. He armed them with the armor of knowledge of his truth, with the unconquerable power of incorruptibility. Now, I'm coming to the last paragraph and, and before you come to the final prayer. And notice that secret symbols means the, the seven vowel tones are the secret symbol of the vibration logos on activation of the true God. So remember that 
that would mean that practice is immensely powerful. So there appeared to them a great attendant, Yesus Mazarius Yezedekus, the living water and the great leaders. So this looks like Jesus' name, Yesus, because there's no right. there's no there's no J. Mazarius Yezedekus. And and it's interesting because <clears throat> um the word for um for um, christ which is which means the anointed one is in 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 the, in the ancient in the ancient um aramaic is is basically isas masiach they, they yeah. call it masiach i mean there's a k in there right it's interesting is it a k or is it a ch well we again that's phonetic so we build words around sound and and trying right. to find the original sound is the hardest thing to do because right. our our knowledge comes from Latinized scripture that was originally written down in Greek and some of right. it in actual ancient Hebrew and Aramaic. But <clears throat> again, we're we're very deluded in our understanding of true um, so, you know, proper sound and intonation of the name of Jesus, right? So appeared to them the great attendant, Jesus, Mazarius, Yezidekis, the living water, and the great leaders, James the Great, and the Theopemptos, and Asael, and they who preside over the spring of truth, Micus, and Micar, and Menesius, and he who presides over the baptism of the living and the purifiers, purifiers and the Sezengen Faranges, <laughs> that's one heck of a word, <laughs> And they who preside over the gates of the waters, Micaeus and Micar, and they who preside over the mountain, Seldeo and Elenos, and the receivers of the great race, the incorruptible mighty men of the great Seth, the ministers of the four lights, the great Gamaliel, and the great Gabriel, and the great Samblo, and the great Abrasix, and they who preside over the sun, its rising, Olsus, Hypnaeus and Her Herumaeus, and they who preside over the entrance of the rest of eternal life, and the rulers, Mexanthor and Mechanor, and they who guard the souls of the elect, Akramas, Strempa, Sochos, and the great power, Heli, Heli, Makar, Makar, Seth, and the great invisible, uncallable, unnameable, virginable spirit, <clears throat> and the silence of the first great light. Armozo, the place of the living auto genes. We're coming to the end here. The God of the truth, and he who is with him, the incorruptible man, Adamus, the second Oriel, the place of the great Seth, and Jesus, they pronounce his name with a J here, who possesses the life, and who came and who came and crucified that which is in the law, the third, Davithe, the place of the sons of the great Seth. The fourth, Aleleth, the place where the souls of the sons are resting. The fifth, Yoel, who presides over the name of him whom it will be granted to baptize with the holy baptism that surpasses the heaven, the incorruptible wow. one. But from now on, through the incorruptible man, Poi Mael, and they who are worthy of the invocation, the renunciations of the five seals in the spring baptism, these will know their receivers as they are instructed about them, and they will know them or be known by them. These will by no means taste death. And now we come to this final um, um, section here, <clears throat> which is a prayer. Ai, Ayus. It's 618, by the way. By oh, the way. it's 618. Ai, ai, aias, io, au, io, ua. So that, that means really truly, oh Jesus, Mazarius, Yazidekis. Oh living water, oh child of the child, oh glorious name, really truly, aeon, oh, oh, on. Ai, i, i, ua. Really truly, ai, a, o, u. <laughs> existing the one who sees the ends really truly ah, yeah, ooh. Thomas used to make me chant these 
Yeah, this is this is the end of the gospel of Egyptian, who is eternal, who really truly Aia Ao in the heart who exists. U I A E E I S I I this is hard to do because <laughs> you don't know Ia O Ia Ia you who are you are what you are. You are who you are. And I know what's amazing about you are what you are. You are who you are. It's kind of an inverse interpretation of the Tetragrammaton, which is I am right. that I'm I am. That I am. Yeah. <clears throat> you are what you are. I am that I am. You are what you are. Do you see? The great name of yours is upon me, O self-begotten perfect one, who is not outside me. I see you, O you who are invisible to everyone. For who will be able to comprehend you in another tongue? Now that I have known you, I mixed myself with the immutable. I have armed myself with the armor of light. I have become light. For the mother was at that place because of the splendid beauty of grace. Therefore, I have stretched out my hands while they were folded. I was shaped in the circle of the riches of the light which is in my bosom which gives shape to my to the many begotten ones in the light into which no complaint reaches i shall declare your glory truly for i have comprehended you so aeas i day ao os o aeon and o god of silence god of silence and it's telling you where god is is in the silence i honor you completely you are my place of rest O oh, sun, S S O E, the formless one who exists in the formless ones, who exists raising up the man in whom you will purify me into your life according to your imperishable name. Therefore, the incense of life is in me. I mixed it with the water after the model of all archons in order that I may live with you in this peace of the saints. You who exist truly forever. This is the book of the great Seth. This is the book which the great Seth wrote and placed in high mountains on which the sun has not risen. Nor is it possible that it, that it should do so. And since the days of the prophets and the apostles and the preachers, the name has not at all risen upon their hearts, nor is it possible that I should do so and their ears not heard it so this is the this book is the book that the great seth wrote so this would be this this would be how far back this goes the great seth wrote this book with letters in 130 years he placed it in the mountain that is called taraxio in order that at the end of the times and the eras by the will of the divine autogenes and the whole pleroma through the gift of the untraceable and thinkable father we love it may come forth and reveal this incorruptible holy race of the great savior and those who dwell with them in love and the great invisible eternal spirit and his only begotten son and the eternal light and his great incorruptible consort <laughs> So you have his oh. only begotten son and the eternal light and his great incorruptible consort. And we know who that is. That oh, means Jesus yeah. has a wife. And the yeah. incorruptible Sophia and the Barbellon and the whole Paroma in eternity. Amen. The gospel of the Egyptians, the great written holy secret book, grace, understanding, perception, and prudence be with him who has written it. Ugnostos, the beloved. In the spirit, in the flesh, my name is gone, Gesos, and my fellow lights in incorruptibility, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior, Ixus, God written, is the holy book of the great invisible spirit. Amen. So this book is called the holy book of the great invisible spirit, and, and therefore it would be, its origins would be with, with Seth, which, which goes back to the beginning right of of the of the of the ancient hebrew race the very very beginning there's and some questions but wait a second i just have one more thought here so you have to understand how this this completes so beautifully that that jesus has a consort 
his incorruptible consort. Right. And and the incorruptible Sophia and the Barbella and the whole Pleroma in eternity. So th this this ends Son who's infallible, right? This ends with his the notation of his marriage. And that's right. probably where we should go next week is is the evidence of his marriage, who his wife right. is, and and wow. Because that that you couldn't put it more clearly. That also, again, if you read John, no, it, it's Mark six one through eight, which is golden ratio six one eight. You'll see that just not only the description of Jesus um, anointing the 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 apostles before they went out to preach the gospels that they had to have their staff, but also that Jesus was with his family, and he, it looks like he had sisters clearly he's not it says that they're not his sisterly sisters they're his family it's really well established and that's canonized scripture by the way that's canonized scripture so jesus came from a big family and and he might have it looks like he would be the first and that he was born his mother was a virgin it, it meaning she was before the age of even getting her period she was somewhere between the age of of 12 around 12 when she gave birth to him we know that from the record so this is to say then that jesus was married and what this scripture sets up if you see it is is the the there, there's offspring of the holy race that that are set upon the earth which means there's a holy bloodline which means this this incorruptible race as it's called are are basically god's is basically God's bloodline as a race. And where did that race get established on the earth? I know where that is. I know exactly where that is. And that would mean that that race came upon the earth in a very physical place. And, and, and we know where that is, which would be where the bloodline of Christ persisted. So with that, we only have a few more minutes left. Are there any questions, Rose? Yeah, David, um, Dan actually asked a question, Dan Nelson. And um, first of all, he said, oh, yeah, so here. Here. Wow. Yeah, he was here last time too. It's really nice to have him. Happy Valentine's Day, Dan and Laura, if you still yeah. there. Anyways, the question he asked was, was Adamus, Adam, Adamus, Adam, the original race? And is it true that Adamus brought the Kabbalah? So I responded in the chat to him to say that I remember reading something about there's four atoms in the Kabbalah. And then I well, no, no, there would be different atoms throughout history. Yeah, agreed. Genesis is a re the, the the human is recalibrated at different periods in history. And so there right. there are different um points in history where there's a recalibration so I can't, Adama, remember the name of, I can't remember the name of the text but there's a text something called like the philistines or something and it's the four atoms of the kabbalah no you see they're, they're, they're that's probably you know when you go to the hopi you you come to the the, the fourth world and eventually the fifth world so it, at the end of each cycle you, you see a new calibrated human because humans have been on this planet for millions of years. But the the, the appearance of, of astronomy and knowledge of, of sacred architecture, plumbing and you know modern civilization appears so suddenly, it doesn't appear gradually. And that sudden arrival is one of the greatest challenges for archaeologists. And that would mean there was some form of divine intervention because Kabbalah, Kabbalah is really not as old as you would think it is. It has some origins. It has origins that are very old, but they don't go back more. They, they can't go back more than about 6,000 years, actually. So these, these manuscripts are, are traditions and re- calibrations like you can see how well thought out and how organized the structure is in here and i think this was difficult when these manuscripts arrived and they were translated because it's it's complicated 
it shows a huge hierarchy. It doesn't so it, it's not so simple for the common man and woman. And I think what we just read today is definitely something that was meant for priests and priestesses to, to study and definitely not the common person. This is not literature for the common person at all, for the subjects even of an empire. They wouldn't even understand what they're reading because there's names that were not. See, when you're you, branding is such that if I give you the names of four angels, I'm branding them, right? And, and if I say there's a fallen angel named Lucifer and there's Gabriel and there's Michael, right. you know, that's so simple for the common person to understand. But if I give you all these names, like when you read the um, the translation of, of the book of Enoch, you're going to see a whole bunch of names of different fallen angels and ascended angels. And as soon as you see a name of an angel, you're not comfortable with you're like oh my god that that's outside of my domain i can't understand this and that's another reason why it's so easy for the public again these things were translated in english in the 70s and 80s they weren't published i actually went to a lecture at university of southern california of by elaine pagels who's a who's a professor i know at Princeton University, I met her and spoke with her. And, you know, she's one of the translators on these manuscripts. Yeah. She's, she, she, and there's Paula Fredrickson. There, there's so many great professors that were involved in the translation of these manuscripts. These were not translated by amateurs. These are real. It took years to get this to the point that this is sitting in front of you. And, and having read these manuscripts for over 25 years myself, it took a long time to be able to index them and say, okay, now we're going to read this one here mm -hmm. next week and this one here because there's a flow to them. And you right. start to see this whole picture. Did you figure out what which which manuscript comes after which one? Do you have like a chronology of manuscripts? Well, there's no chronology. There's there's no order that they're put in an alphabetical index, but there's yeah, no know. real order. Well, what about yours? Did you did you make a list yourself for yourself? Like, did you figure it no, out? No, what I did is I read them and I, I understand kind of the order in the organization that they go into right. because some of them are rather simple. Like yeah. when you read the gospel of, of uh, Mary Magdalene, it's a very simple piece of work, although... Mm -hmm huge sections of it were damaged which is very tragic we, we right. don't have a lot there which is really again why don't we have the testimony of mary magdalene written in There's her own no. words in fact one day that may appear on the scene like we, I we think may, it will. we may actually find it because it, it 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 definitely went with her into what is now france right and you, you can definitely see evidence of that. But the, and there may be more to come. There may be more discoveries made in the sands. But these particular manuscripts that we're reading here were rediscovered. The, Ro the Roman church, the Roman Catholic church had fragments of a lot of these in their library, but they didn't have them in the perfect complete form when they were found in Nag Hammadi, Egypt. And Nag Hammadi, Egypt is, 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 you're getting, you know, you go to Cairo at the top and the Great Pyramids and you go down the Nile. Sorry, you're actually going up the Nile. You're going up the Nile. And then, which is Southern Egypt because the Nile is flowing towards the, uh, the Mediterranean. But when you go up the Nile, you come to, to the region where Nag Hammadi actually is. And what's interesting about it is there was a period it was in it was in the 90s when the virgin mary appeared over this church in that same region of egypt and it actually made abc world news you know all the local people there saw her blinding light of the virgin mary appearing hovering above the coptic egyptian christian churches right and so mary's bought luminous body of light also appeared in a district of cairo in the the um I'm trying to remember the date. It was like in the 1960s. 
and it made the New York Times that story. And there's photographs of her in, in, with these very primitive black and white cameras, you know, early day black and white cameras, um, in the, the called the Zaytun operations of the Virgin Mary. So Mary fully physically manifested for people to see hovering in this body of white. And there's these glowing, like you could call them UFOs up in the sky above. And right. again, that happened, I think it was around the year 2000. I have to check the date. And she's appearing above these Coptic churches in the southern region of Egypt near where these manuscripts were found. So I found it remarkable for, for her to appear in the modern era in a body of white that you could take pictures of that was so bright apparently blinded your eyes. And that, that should have been all over the news on every news channel in the freaking world. But it did make ABC World News. But, fun, but in a funny way, nobody seemed to really care. <laughs> I don't know how nobody could care because I don't know anybody so else knows how to so do david that. exactly what are the four races and what is the original race is it adamos like dan's asking and finally there's someone asking i don't think there's an original i don't think there's an original race i i think there were many beyond earth sources that planted seeds of races here because if you read the secret gospel of john you'll see there were many gods and goddesses that fashioned the human body you know which is a, again a recalibration of of the human a regenesis so there there's no question that there were many when you consider that these gods and goddesses don't live on our earth where did they come from is another huge question but that the fact that they're physically creating our condition this thing but like but like this isn't the gnostic gospels isn't the only place that speaks of races races like Hindi Hindi scripture speaks about it. Um, Asian scripture speaks about races: yellow race, red race. It literally says black race, red lit race, yellow race. Like the most ancient Sanskrit texts talk about this. So there well, must you're have been the physical. Scripture. You're going into the physical race, but if you read these scriptures correctly, you'll see that the. The supreme God that seems to be watching everything and lives inside of all of us. That was in the trimorphic right. culture. So this is so this is the the race. So this is a, a division of the light. The races in the in the different levels of light. It is seems that, what, that what the supreme the supreme God seems to see deficiencies and corruptions that occur throughout the ages. And it right. sends in a new race, which is the new recalibrated human, to correct the deficiency and give people a new way to ascend. So that in essence, that probably becomes a new religion or a new practice or a new way to get out of the, the what this is called as the region of chaos, right? And we just right. saw in this piece of work that there are rulers, there are rulers over this region of chaos. Because it's chaotic. Because we took in the knowledge of good and evil and we each judged for ourselves egotistically. And because we judge good and evil egotistically, we don't get along. It's poison. So that's why Jesus tried to end judgment. You have to end judgment in your own mind to see clearly, to see holographically that there is no either or. There's a, a million possible holographic polarity matrices. I hear you, yeah. So we get, we get polarized. We say it can only be one way. It has right. to be my way or the highway. And so that no, causes no, no, no. chaos. And the, and the infinite God above sees the human stuck in this egotistical chaos, including racism. Right. Racism. Right. That's what the Tower of Babel, that's what the Tower of Babel is. And then he then he destroys the Tower of Babel, so then the divisions go away, right? Well, the, the, the Babel Tower is destroyed and the, the humans are confused among 72 languages. Now there's like 7,200 languages upon the earth. So, right. so, so times 100 today. So that means, but, but there's even more than 7,200 languages because you, you think of tribal communities, even in our world today, people say, oh, I can't relate to that that person's music that they dance to or i can't relate to this so in a way we all have our own egotistical interpretation and of language and we isolate each other isolate isolate right. isolate oh i don't get along with you I don't. 
So we've got more isolation today and less unification on the planet than we've ever had. So that's why they see this as a region of, of chaos. So right. all our minds are so judgmental. So if you, if you just stop judging, you do this. I, I, I do this practice every day. Yeah. When I meditate, there is so much ecstasy. Most humans would overdose. They could not handle it. You can give me any plant, any, any drug. It won't compare to what happens to me when I meditate. Because I've done those things when I was younger. And some of them are very good. They can open the door to, for somebody. But eventually, you learn how to do it without any plants. And when you go into this state, the primary focus is you have to end all judgment, not only of others, but yourself. And then you have to not judge your own experience. You, you go from, see, judging is a mental trip. When, when you're meditating, you're going from thinking into feeling-based awareness. And when you go into feeling-based awareness, that's where the real intelligence is. It's in the feeling-based, resonance-based awareness. And the more you get out of dualistic thinking, right, because we, we put our kids through school, and one day they're going to get yes or no answers. You know those yes or no answer tests? Yeah. Either or. We're teaching them there's a right That's answer and a wrong answer. But we'll tell them their answer was wrong when 10 years later they might have been right because yeah. – our view, our knowledge evolves, and eventually, what we formerly thought was right was actually wrong. That's part of right. what I'm saying. So, when when you suspend judgment, that's the first great achievement in yourself. No judgment, just experience, just feel. No, because judging is a head trip. Feeling is is a totally different level of intelligence. So that's why Jesus put so, and then the forgiveness of sins is letting, is also a deeper level of no judgment, isn't it? Because forgiving yeah. your sins means you didn't really do anything wrong. <laughs> You're yeah. judging that you did something wrong. You just had an wow. experience, right? Yeah. And you came down so heavily on each other because what did anybody really do that was so bad? Well, yeah, when, when you're going to invade a country and you're going to drop bombs and kill children, that is really bad. And, and you're probably going to pay the price when you die for, for that sin. But, but that is also chaos, isn't it? Because when one country wants to steal another country, and we've been doing this for thousands of years, North America is a stolen territory, right? And, and it, it was a First Nations Native American Indian territory. And we thought their God was different than ours. Now watch this. The Hopi sun god is Tawa. Now take away the T because the T is a Mesoamerican accent. It's Awa, Yawa, the, 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 the tetragrammaton. It's the, same, it's the same vibration, right? And when you read this piece of scripture, it starts with the real name of God being a, a series of vowel vibrations, which eventually turn into when you add your consonants and your syllables into a structured word, because people say Jehovah now, right? So they put a J in there when there was no J. That was a Latin idea. So then you put a J in there, and now you have Jehovah. So now you have a word, right? And then if you say, well, my God's name is Jehovah, well, my God's name is Jehovah, and then 100 years later, you've got uh, Mahova or something like that. So you can follow the history of words in different cultures, and you can come back to this origin place and you'll see that the, 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 the incident of the Tower of Babel is not a myth yeah. that is unresolvable. We were scattered into different languages. The number 72 yeah. is actually a very sacred number, even though it's symbolic. Like, it shows up over and over again in scripture. Yeah, today there's over Across 72. The there's somewhere around, we're just under 7,200 languages today. But but it's right. symbolic more than actual. Yeah. It's more yeah, symbolic agree. that we judge that we have different gods because of the way we intone the word of that god. <clears throat> so the Hopi say, let's get rid of the T. It's, it's, it is Yahweh. It really is. Just take away the T. 
So then you'll you'll see that we're a lot of us, even though we're labeled different religions, we're actually plugged into the same place. And we're judging each other. And the judgment is why this is a chaotic realm, just as described in the scripture. The humans are stuck in the chaos and they're going to fight with each other. And you're going to say, my daughter can't marry your son because you disagree and we have a sorry our god is a different god and you're going to hell because you're catholic and you know, whatever you know that's the realm of chaos that's the ego that's why jesus said don't judge stop the judgment and forgiveness of sins is a higher level of not judging because because the idea of a sin is a judgment right so when you're forgiven your sins you're not judging what you thought you did that was so what well, was so bad. Oh my God, I had this experience and and I'm gonna go to hell for it. It, it, it. Like that's absurd. What Jesus is saying is actually stop judging, free yourself. And once you once you forgive yourself, then you can forgive. How many times do people get married and then they, they start fighting and they get divorced? And then they have children sitting there and they're fighting because one of them just simply cannot resolve that they think they're right and the other person's wrong. Like, this, this is the core of, of what kills the luminosity and the light in the living spirit. So ending judgment, forgiveness of sins is the core of Jesus's, Jesus' uh, message. It's so where core. is where where is Jesus's lineage or race? Where is the origin? Well, we'll go into that because I'm I'm going to take people through the painting, the Mona Lisa and the Salvatore Mundi, and then I'm going to show you in the Gnostic scriptures the the evidence of the marriage of Jesus and and, and Magdalene. Well, I mean, again, when people are programmed that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute and most good scholars today know she came from a super rich family that the Magdalene's family funded the, the movement of the apostles across the landscape actually because her family two, owned all the fishing vessels in the Sea of Galilee. There's two more Peter. questions and then I'll, I'll does temple mean template I guess yeah when you say kind of hard not to judge a, a pedophile child killer, you're right. That's why we have a legal system. That's why God gave Moses a, a series of commandments. But let's compare how many commandments Moses was given to, to how many laws are written today in the legal code. <laughs> it, in a way, God was very innocent because at that time there weren't as, as many crimes. Today, you know, you can get a parking ticket for parking in the wrong place, especially if you have a truck and you're in Ottawa right now. So they, they create laws for everything. Humans can't do anything without running into a law. But yes, when a, when a person becomes abusive, what causes a person to kill? First, you have to establish anger. Anger comes from self-judgment or outwardly judgment frustration not being able to get what you want or get things to happen the way you want them to it can come from repression so you have to go to the origin of anger to resolve it and, and what causes somebody to do something wrong but but eventually yes that's th there's a point where when a criminal crosses a certain line you you have to I mean, I don't believe in just throwing people in prison and making them suffer. I believe you have to rehabilitate human beings. You have to get to the core of cause, the root cause of what's causing yeah, the epidemic problems. So if we have an epidemic in the churches, and it's not just in the churches, it's in the Boy Scouts of America, which is called pedophilia, we have to get to the origin of cause to solve the problem. You, you can't just keep throwing everybody in prison and then making them burn. You've got to get to the, what, why are people this sick? Why are they thinking, that, where does this come from, right? And you, you get into the subject of, of sexual oppression and, and oppression. But yeah, you have to have laws. I, I'm not saying to live, have a lawless society at all, but I'm saying that the, the process of forgiveness and healing is the way to go with criminals. You like if a criminal is stealing 
because they don't have enough, you have to come to again to root cause. Why don't you have enough? Well, maybe it's because our society screwed up and we make people work all day. And when they come home and they look in their bank account, they can't pay the food and the rent. They can pay the rent, but then they can't eat. So then you have to say, well, there's something wrong there. Right. And, and, and there's a reason this person turned to crime because we're not giving people sustainability. Mo most crimes that exist in the world have a root cause that could be cured if we wanted to, to, to really get to the root of the problem. But again, you're not going to get to the root of the problem by just judging them and throwing them in jail and saying, well, you're going to live in a slimy cell and eat, you know, um, succotash, which is corn slop. And then, you know, you're, you're going to suffer because of what you did. I mean, that that's not going to change the world. We got to get to the root cause and, 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 and heal people is what, what I believe. But, so anyway, um, next time we're probably going to go into the the the, the evidence in, in the Gnostic scripture, but also the painting Mona Lisa and Salvatore Mundi. There's clear evidence of the marriage of Christ and Magdalene in both of those paintings, which I'm going to be able to show you. So have a great day. Thanks for being here. We we still getting about four to five hundred views on these, so it's very interesting and. Um, um, thank you. Thank you just for being here and, and really looking into this. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. I'm going to end the broadcast. Bye.